We said in our video on fractional distillation that the different fractions have different flammabilities. We said that the um, short fractions that we obtain from the top of the fractionating column are very, very flammable. They burn very easily and are very useful as fuels. We said that the ones in the bottom of our column um, are much less flammable and are therefore not as useful. What this means is when we do fractional distillation on crude oil, we get an awful lot of products which there is very, very low demand for. People do not want to buy them, and therefore they're not very valuable. And thankfully, we can use a method to actually turn some of these longer hydrocarbon chains into much smaller and more useful ones. And that process is called cracking. So this isn't a particularly long hydrocarbon chain. This one would be quite flammable, but let's imagine, let's imagine I took this one here, which is, it's got 10 carbon atoms and 22 hydrogens, it's an alkane. Um, we'll go through how we would actually do the process of cracking in a minute. Um, but the basic idea is I would heat this um, hydrocarbon up, um, vaporize it. I don't want to burn it, I just want to heat it and evaporate it. And I'll pass it over a hot catalyst. And what that will do is it will cause this um, hydrocarbon to decompose. It's a thermal decomposition reaction. Um, and I'll break it up into two or more smaller hydrocarbons. In this case, I've started off with C10H22. The first product I've made is has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbon atoms, so it'd be C seven H sixteen. You can't the hydrogen should be sixteen there. Um, and if you were told in the exam that there is one of a product and you were asked to figure out what that was, you'd simply need to look at the number of um, carbon atoms you started with. Um, look at the first product you've got, how many carbon atoms it's got, and work out the difference. And this uses the law of conservation of mass, which tells us that atoms cannot be created or destroyed in chemical reactions. So the leftover, you'll have C3, because 3 plus 7 is 10, um, and then 22 minus 16 is going to be um, H6. So if you have looked at the video on general formulae, what you should spot is that our first product here is an alkane, and our second product is actually an alkene. So cracking always produces an alkane. And since this alkane is shorter than the one we started with, it's going to be more flammable and therefore more useful as a fuel than the one we started with. Okay, and you also always get one or more alkenes. which in this case is this one here. So our, al, um, our alkanes are useful as fuels. The alkenes we produce are incredibly useful too. We can use them for all sorts of processes, but the, one of the key ones is to produce plastics and polymers, which I will look at in the next video. So cracking, incredibly important process, we can turn long, not very useful hydrocarbons into two or more shorter hydrocarbons, which are much more useful than what we start with. Um, how do we actually do this process then? Um, well, there's lots of different ways you could do this. In a lab, it would normally look something like this. You would normally have a boiling tube um, and you will have mineral wool, which is basically non-flammable um, but absorbent wool, which contains your um, long hydrocarbon. And you would then have to use some form of catalyst. Um, in a lab, we often use a uh, piece of broken pot because they're quite cheap, but you could use a whole um, heap of different catalysts. And in this case, let's just say it's pot. The idea is it is a catalyst. It is gonna, it's gonna get the reaction going. It's gonna lower the activation energy and cause this compound to firmly decompose without being used up. What you were then gonna have is a, um, a tube to collect the products that are given off. Um, and what we normally have is um, them going into a water trough. So you could then easily collect the compounds that are produced here. Um, as I said, it's a thermal decomposition reaction, so we're going to have to heat up both the catalyst to get it nice and hot, and the um, hydrocarbon to make sure it evaporates. And as the um, hydrocarbon evaporates and passes over the catalyst, it will thermally decompose. Just like limestone does when heated up, it means breaking down a compound using just heat. 
So if you look at my equation at the top, I've got no other reactants apart from um, decane, this uh, secant H22, is breaking up just using heat and a catalyst and forming two products.